Two historically proud programs in the Michigan Wolverines and the Georgia Bulldogs, two teams who this year have been nothing but elite, take the field in Miami in the Capital One Orange Bowl on Friday the 31st to decide who will go to the national championship game. Michigan looking for their first national title since 1997, and Georgia looking for their first since 1980, the last time they won their national title. Today, I am going to preview both of these teams, tell the story of how I think they match up and how they will match up. I am a Michigan fan, so there may be some bias in this video. Just want to let you guys know. However, I tend to view myself as someone who can set his own bias aside and look at things from the view of just how they are. So I'm going to attempt to do that. At the end of the video, like always, I will be giving my prediction. So watch the whole thing. Stay tuned for that. I promise it's worth it. If you're new to this channel, give us a like, hit that subscribe button, help us get to 3,000 subscribers. I will be doing a giveaway, so stay tuned for that as well. Hit the notification bell so you can get notified when I post future college football videos. Share this video around, and tell me in the comments below what you think. Let's get into it. So some of the basics here for this matchup. It is being played in Miami, Florida. Warm weather. You might not think that it is a huge deal, but Michigan is not used to this warm weather. It could be a possible effect that could play into Georgia's favor. More importantly, the game starts at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time, and in everyone's viewpoint except Michigan fans and some other fans, Georgia is a heavy favorite to win here. Georgia's being given a 67.6% chance to win the game according to ESPN's football power index. They are also favored by 8 points according to ESPN's pick center. Georgia, listen, pe what people are thinking is that Georgia, after being humiliated on the national stage by Alabama, they're going to be mad, they're going to be prepared, they're going to want another shot at Alabama, and with how good their defense and even offense have played this year, everyone's going to assume that they're going to be on top of their game, and they're going to be practicing for this moment, and I agree with those two things. Michigan, however, is 11-2 and against the spread compared to Georgia being 8-5. and Michigan this year, unlike other years in the past, they're they're a dog. They love being doubted. They love being the underdog. So that is something to watch out for. They're eleven and two against the spread. The two games they lost to by the spread were Michigan State and Rutgers. They beat Ohio State, Iowa, Maryland, Penn State. Yeah, ever since the state game. They have been on top, on top of their game. And they get better and better every week and are peaking at the right time. So this matchup to me is very, very intriguing. I have humongous respect for both coaches. Both coaches, at minimum, you could say are good. I don't think you can say that either is a bad coach, despite Kirby Smart's struggles against Bama and similarly Jim Harbaugh's struggles against Ohio State and his rivals. But let's get into previewing the teams just, you know, offense v defense. Michigan offense versus the Georgia defense, I think, is what is going to name this game. And you might ask, well, why is that? And the answer to that question is Georgia's Georgia's offense. What defense all year has it faced? It in my opinion Looking at everything, it has not faced a defense like Michigan. And Michigan's defense has done very well at containing high-powered offensive teams outside of Michigan State. But, you, you know, look at Ohio State. Held them to 27 points. Again, Michigan's peaking. They held Iowa to three. Iowa's not the greatest offense, but the Ohio State game is the main focus. If you assume... That Michigan is peaking, which I think is going to be a general assumption, 
and even Georgia fans will know if you also assume that Georgia's offense against better competition, like Alabama, can have moments where it sputters and can't score a lot of points, we're, I'm going to assume as a constant Georgia's not going to be scoring a lot of points here. Not that Michigan's going to hold them to under 10, it's asinine, but this is the interesting matchup because Michigan's offense has also been peaking, but it's had some struggles and it has not faced a defense like Georgia. Likewise, Georgia's defense against the only team whose offense is better than Michigan's and Alabama, well, got torn apart. This is the matchup that has the unknown to it, and therefore I think what determines the game entirely. But anyway, enough of my chitter-chat. Michigan's offense is led by quarterback Cade McNamara, who's passed for 2,470 yards, completes 64.6% of his passes, averages 8 yards per pass, 15 touchdowns, 4 interceptions. He's been only sacked 7 times. He has a 145.4 passer rating. Cade makes very little mistakes. He is he makes NFL-like throws when needed. Now, in saying that, he is not an elite quarterback. I would not even say he is a great quarterback. He is a good quarterback who has the normal Harbaugh stat line. He just makes less mistakes and is a better leader than those past. He does what needs to be done. You also have a little cherry on top in J.J. McCarthy, except this cherry on top actually adds flavor to the milkshake. McCarthy has thrown for only 385 yards, completes 64.3% of his passes, averages 9.2 yards per pass. He has four touchdowns, two picks. He's been sacked three times. He has a 163.2 QB rating, a passer rating, pardon me. He also has 100 rushing yards on the ground for 4.3 yards per carry and two touchdowns. McCarthy adds to Michigan's offense a little bit of mystery because he can throw very well. He also has an uncanny ability to run and to read um, opposing defenders. So McCarthy just adds a little bit of that upside while Cade's the more stable, steady-going guy, which is why Cade is and should be the starter. But Michigan's mainly known for their rushing attack, with Hassan Haskins and Blake Corum. Haskins having 1,288 rushing yards, for 4.9 yards per carry and 20 rushing touchdowns. Corum with 939 rushing yards, 6.7 yards per carry and 11 touchdowns. Corum beating, being the speedy, shifty guy. Haskins being the guy that always falls forward but doesn't necessarily have the same amount of moves. They're a nice one-two punch. A.J. Henning, Donovan Edwards, J.J. McCarthy, and Roman Wilson have also been shown to be used in their own versatile roles. Henning and Wilson are wide receivers who are used on end arounds. Edwards can be used for basically about anything. He's a great receiving back. He has shown an ability to have some shiftiness and nice ball carrier vision. And J.J. McCarthy, again, has just that ability to read people out of the backfield. On the receiving end, you have Cornelius Johnson, the wide receiver who leads the team in receiving yards with 609. He averages 16 yards per reception and three receiving touchdowns. Roman Wilson and Eric All have 378 and 374 receiving yards, respectively. Wilson has three receiving touchdowns. All has two. Eric All is the clutch tight end. He's the guy that saved our season at Penn State. And he is a really good, solid receiver. Also, white watch out for the names of Mike Sanistril, Dalen Baldwin, Donovan Edwards, Andrell Anthony, and Luke Schoonmaker. Blake Corum and Hassan Haskins have also been proven to have some receptions out of the backfield. So that is Michigan's offense. It scores just over five touchdowns a game has around 451 yards per game, pretty even with rushing and passing yards. It's a very balanced and efficient offense, fourth in efficiency. But you look at Georgia's defense, and as a Michigan fan, Georgia's defense is terrifying. Even after that Alabama game, 
We don't have Alabama's quarterback. We don't have Alabama's wide receivers. Doesn't mean we don't have playmakers, and I still think we have a better offensive line than Alabama does. But Georgia and their front seven match up very well with our run-heavy game, and that's what's going to determine it. We have to be able to, as Michigan, we have to be able to move Georgia's defense, who only allows on average 9.5 points per game, only 250 yards. 172 of them are passing. Georgia can be passed on. I like to compare their defense to Wisconsin's. It's great at everything or elite at everything except defending the pass, which it is still good at doing, by the way, but only allowing 81 rushing yards per game. That is going to be very hard, very challenging to overcome. So let's get into Georgia's defense. Georgia's defense, you know, the big name out there, is Jordan Davis, the defensive lineman, but he only has 28 total tackles and two sacks, and he is mainly used to stop the run. He is a beast, does not have the greatest stamina as proven in the Alabama game, but what I like to look at is their star, Nicobe Dean. Nicobe Dean has 61 total tackles, five sacks, five passes defended, two interceptions, one returned for six, and a forced fumble. Georgia's leader in sacks is Nicobe Dean and Adam Anderson, who is another linebacker. Both have 10 combined sacks. Anderson also has 32 total tackles and a pass defended. Robert Beal Jr. and Channing Tindall, two more linebackers, also have nine sacks combined, four and a half sacks each. And they both combined have two passes defended and a forced fumble. I mean, Georgia has arguably the best linebacker core in the nation, and their defensive linemen, you know, Travon Walker, who has four sacks, two passes defended, 32 total tackles, Jalen Carter with three sacks, a pass defended, and 31, you know, total tackles. The reason that Georgia's leader in total tackles is 61 is because they just force you into three and outs. They shut you down. This Georgia defense is nothing to take lightly. And there are some Michigan fans, I confess, who are taking this defense too lightly, much like there are Georgia fans who believe that their defense is invincible to an offense like Michigan's. It's not the case. There are always exceptions to the rule. But this defense is terrifying. I don't care what Alabama did to them. It's Nick Saban against a former assistant, and you know how that normally goes. This is different. Georgia's defense, Michigan is going to have to run. They're going to have to test to the edge. They're going to have to throw. I mean, if Michigan is smart, you should expect a flea flicker, if not two or three of them, because like the Wisconsin game, Michigan is going to need to throw very consistently. They cannot only lean on the run. Doesn't mean you abandon it. Part of the reason Michigan ran is because they continued to te- one, not ran, pardon me, is they continued to test the run against Wisconsin and other teams, even when it was hard to run. They kept using it to keep the opposing defense honest. That's what Michigan will need to do to win. And the breakout players in this matchup, Cade and Nicobe Dean. These are the two names that you are going to need to look out for. If Michigan wins this game, it will be more likely than not because Cade McNamara made the throws necessary because he didn't turn over the ball, because he had a game where he had a passer rating greater than 145.4. He did above average. And his receivers caught the ball. They ran their routes properly. His O-line blocked for him. If we win, Cade will likely, he'll look good in the stat sheet. And if Georgia wins, I think you will see N'Kobe Dean have a huge game. You'll probably see him get a sack. You might see him get a pick. What you'll definitely see is him getting plenty of tackles for loss. Because we all know this can happen. Michigan's run might be shut down. And if it's shut down, you can guarantee that N'Kobe Dean... And anyone on their front seven are going to start racking up the tackles for loss and possibly racking up some turnovers. Because if Michigan's run is completely shut down, who knows? Maybe Michigan's offense panics 
and vice versa as well. I mean, this matchup here, the offense and the defense, Michigan's offense versus Georgia's defense, is what I think is very critical. But I have a question to ask you guys, just for a few seconds. Who do you think is going to be the breakout player? Whether you're a Georgia fan or a Michigan fan, tell me right now in the comments below. Do you think that Kate is a huge game? Do you think that Dean is a huge game? Do you think that Jordan Davis just has this amazing game where he gets, where he doubles his sacks on the year? Do you think, I mean, to anything, what do you think? Who's your breakout player? Who's your MVP of this game? The player that helps his team win. Tell me down below. And now we'll get back to previewing. We're going to go to Michigan's defense versus Georgia's offense. This, like I said, I'm going to kind of assume is a constant. You, you look at Georgia's schedule and who they have played. The only other team who might have a better defense than Michigan, who Georgia has played, is, I would say, Clemson. And Clemson held them to three offensive points. This matchup here, what, what I'm going to assume is going to happen is Georgia will get a touchdown or two. They'll get a couple field goals. You know, I just, I look at Stetson Bennett. I look at the fact that JT Daniels wasn't even considered to go in for Stetson Bennett after the pick six. I think that tells you your quarterback situation. I think that tells me that Daniels is not, is not setting a foot on the field to play for Georgia. He'll be on the sidelines. I don't think he'll set a foot. That being said, Michigan's defense has struggled before, especially against run-heavy teams. So if that Georgia, if that Georgia run game gets going, it could get ugly. Georgia's offense here is led by Stetson Bennett at QB. And some may say he's dreaded or awful. Regardless, his story is is amazing. From walk-on to throwing for 2,325 yards, completing 64% of his passes, averaging 10.1 yards per pass, 24 TDs, 7 picks, 9 sacks, and a 176.8 passer rating. He's a good QB. He is not a bad QB. He, that being said, he's not a great QB or an elite QB. People like to make extremes you know, when Cade does well, he's all of a sudden this first-round QB to Michigan fans. When he does poorly, he needs to be benched, never forgiven, and J.J. McCarthy being subbed in. Jumping to extremes is stupid. Stetson's a good QB. The issue is the scheming and the fact that he he has a ceiling. His ceiling is lower than a lot of other QBs. It's also higher than a lot of other QBs. Remember, he started as a walk-on. There's only so much he can do. And he hasn't had practice in having to make and having to win a game because his run game has helped him do that. But he's a good QB. Let's make no mistake. Georgia, in my opinion, can beat they can beat Michigan. I don't know about Alabama, but I think they have a shot to beat Michigan with Stetson Bennett as their starting QB. That being said, their run game is what their run game needs to be good if they're going to do that. Zamir White is going to have to have a huge game. James Cook is going to have to have a huge game. And if you're wondering why I haven't talked about JT Daniels, JT Daniels wasn't even again considered. He was not even considered to sub to be subbed in for Stetson. Kirby said so. And with how he hasn't played at all, I'm just going to assume that he's not he's just not going to be in the Orange Bowl. That's just an assumption that I'm going to make. If you disagree with that, you can tell me down below. But Zamir White has had 6 718 rushing yards on the year for 5.3 yards per carry and 10 rushing touchdowns. James Cook has had 619 rushing yards for 6.1 yards per carry and 7 touchdowns. Kenny McIntosh and Stetson Bennett have also ran the football. 
McIntosh is a running back, and Bennett has shown an uncanny ability to scramble with 251 rushing yards, 5.6 yards per carry, and a rushing touchdown. McIntosh has 317 rushing yards, 5.9 yards per carry, and three rushing touchdowns. On the receiving end, this is where it gets interesting. We may have all heard of George Pickens before the year. And here comes Brock Bowers. I mean, one of the best tight ends in the country. He has 791 receiving yards, 16.8 yards per reception. That's a lot for a tight end. And 11 receiving touchdowns. Lad McConkey is their second leader. He's a freshman. He is probable and is expected to be available for the bowl game against Michigan, but there is a possibility he'll be out. He is a freshman. He has 430 receiving yards, 15.4 yards per reception, five receiving touchdowns. Jermaine Burton, Adani Mitchell, and Kenny McIntosh all have at least two receiving touchdowns and at least 180 receiving yards, so watch out for them. George Pickens has keeps getting healthier, keeps recovering. I'd expect him to get a reception or two, maybe more, against Michigan. So watch out for him as well. I mean, guys, this Georgia wide receiver core, it's a pretty big deal, honestly. I mean, they have five stars at nearly every position. Georgia is very close to being at Alabama's full talent level. It's Georgia and Alabama when it comes to recruiting talent. So just because Georgia's not known as this offensive team, they have talent at almost every position on offense, minus, I would say, the quarterback position. And that's because I don't know what's going on. I don't know why JT Daniels hasn't gotten the start. I'm thinking, listen, for all you Georgia fans out there, this is the last thing I'm going to say. Do you really think that that Kirby Smart is stupid enough to choose a worse QB over his best player? That's my question to you, because part of me thinks, actually, the majority, the majority of my whole being, brain, heart, gut, whatever you want to call it, thinks that Stetson Bennett is playing because he is the best that you have. And whether that's... Truth or not, we don't know, but from what I've seen and from what I've heard, it sounds like it's either that or some other underlying issue that hasn't been solved. And that's Georgia's offense, and now we're going to get to Michigan's defense. Michigan's defense is a defense that is known for its two edge rushers in Aiden Hutchinson and David Ojabo. Aiden Hutchinson has 58 total tackles, 14 sacks, three passes defended, two forced fumbles, and a fumble recovery. David Ojabo has 35 total tackles, 11 sacks, three passes defended, but five forced fumbles and a fumble recovery. These two are the pass rush. Now, other guys have gotten pressure and gotten to the quarterback. These two are the greatest pressure duo, the greatest edge duo in all of college football at the moment. These two, you got to watch out for. Georgia's O-line has to be ready for these two. They cannot take these two lightly. These two are a non-negotiable. They will get pressure on Stetson Bennett and on GT Daniels. The question is, how do they react to that pressure, and can the pressure be limited by Georgia's O-line? Again, Georgia very talented team. They have five stars littered and sprinkled at every position. So these are the stars, but you can't overlook everyone else. I mean, you can't overlook Michael Barrett, the linebacker, Junior Junior Colson, who's a true freshman. They have a combined one and a half sacks, three passes defended, and a fumble recovery. You can't look past Michigan's defensive backs. Daxton Hill is second in total tackles with 65. He has a half sack, seven passes defended, two picks, and a fumble recovery. Brad Hawkins and Vincent Gray as well. Vincent Gray is a very improved player from last year. 
He was terrible last year. He's pretty good this year. And DJ Turner, RJ Moten, Rod Moore, all defensive backs. Michigan's secondary is underrated. It is protected. Some of its weaknesses are hidden by the pressure that Hutchinson and Ojabo provide. But that being said, Michigan's secondary does capitalize off mistakes. They're very good in coverage. Steve Klinkscale is one of the greatest secondary coaches, maybe even the greatest, in the nation. That's why there's been such great improvement in Michigan's secondary. Michigan's defense, there's not as much to talk about, I'd say, as Georgia's offense because the curiosity surrounding Georgia's QB situation and I mean, Michigan's defense has kind of performed at this steady level throughout the year, an outlier obviously being the Michigan State game. Michigan's defense is willing to let you pile yards, but you have to work for it. It's not exactly a bend but not break concept, but it also is. In the case of the Ohio State game, where Ohio State had to kick two field goals, and in the case of Penn State, where Penn State had to settle for you know, three field goals, really four, just one of them was a botched fake. But this defense is strong. It only allows like 16.1 points per game, around only 300 yards. It's not the same as Georgia's. It's only 11th in efficiency. It could be better, but it is great. And I, as a Michigan fan, will take it. We just have to limit Georgia's offense, force them to be one-dimensional, and force Stetson Bennett to make mistakes. That is my preview between Michigan's defense and Georgia's offense. So finally, we're going to get to my position by position rankings and then get to my prediction. My position by position rankings are here. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it. Just going to a few seconds per position. Michigan's QB situation. No, the average passer rating is lower, but think of how many times that Cade or JJ have directly cost their team the game. JJ has shown a lot of potential. He's a five-star. Cade is a four-star who's been a leader. He's kept this team in good positions. He doesn't make too many mistakes. I think that Michigan's QBs will make less mistakes than Georgia's QBs. But it's not saying that, you know, Michigan's pass game supposedly is better. Keep in mind, Georgia, and we'll get to this later, they have more talented receivers and tight ends. Running backs, I think Blake Corum and Hassan Haskins are better than James White, than Zamir White and James Cook. Almost got those names mixed up. Haskins has never fumbled the entire year. I don't think Corum has either, and Corum is electric, provides, both of them provide that one-two punch. Georgia has a great run game. They have a great O-line. I just think Michigan's is a touch better. Michigan's O-line, they've been one of the best in the nation. They've resisted the likes of Ohio State's defensive line. They didn't let Michigan State's D-line, who's a sack machine, get to their QB once. Never happened. I mean, they... Their, their worst game was the Penn State game when they faced Arnold Ebiketti, and he's one of the better defensive ends in the nation. Now you get to tight ends, and Georgia finally takes the advantage here. I mean, I gotta be real, Georgia's tight end who leads them in receiving yards is a scary guy. Brock Bowers is intimidating. He's a very good tight end, and I think Georgia's tight ends are the top two rated in the nation by pro football focus. And then you got to go to the wide receivers as well. And I do think that you look at George Pickens, and I mean, we have Andrell Anthony. We do have Cornelius Johnson. We have have playmakers. We don't have the talent that Georgia has at the wide receiver position. We don't have a George Pickens. We don't have a Brock Bowers. I mean, we don't have a Ladd McConkey who's a freshmen making big plays and breaking tackles. We just, we don't have that. It's the same thing with the defensive line. We have better pass rushers than Georgia does. If we were to separate defensive ends and defensive tackles, I'd give Michigan the end position. But Georgia's D-line has bullied offensive lines all year. 
Unlike our defensive line, they have never failed to shut down the run. They're more consistent, they don't rely on two players to do it all, and they constantly sub guys out, they have more depth at that position. Georgia's D-line is good. There's a reason that Jordan Davis gets all the attention that he does, along with the rest of his D-line. And then finally, linebackers. This is close because, you know, we have David Ojabo, but Georgia, they have the best linebacker core in the nation. We don't have N'Kobe Dean, Adam Anderson, Robin, Robert Beal, and Channing Tindall. We don't have like four great linebackers. We have good linebackers. We have good depth at that position. It does not match Georgia's. I mean, their linebacker won the best linebacker of the year award. Pardon me that I don't remember the name of it. Defensive backs, Michigan's defensive backs faced a team much like Alabama's on offense on November 27th, and we did not give up 41 points, and we did not give up endless deep passes. I would take Michigan's secondary over Georgia's personally. Special teams, this one's close. Michigan is ranked first in efficiency. Georgia's 30 third, but Georgia, I've heard, also has one of the best kickers in the country. No, best punters, pardon me. Michigan is one of the best kickers in the country. That's that. That's the position-by-position comparison. And finally, here is my prediction. My prediction, Michigan 27, Georgia 20. The prediction does have some bias in it. I will admit that. But Georgia could very, very easily win this game. Georgia's strengths, they play well to Michigan's weaknesses. I just think that, like the Wisconsin game, Michigan will they'll throw enough, they'll run enough, and they'll do more than enough on defense to limit their opponent, and they'll come out with a seven-point win. This game will be a dogfight. I'm very excited. I just think that Georgia resembles Wisconsin too much. Their, Wisconsin is literally, you look at them this year, They are a quarterback away from winning the West, potentially winning the Big Ten. But Mertz brings them down so much. Bennett doesn't bring Georgia down as much as Mertz brings Wisconsin down. But the other part of that is Georgia has five stars everywhere. Wisconsin has a few four stars. They don't have the same depth and, you know, concrete, strong foundation that Kirby Smart has built. Recruiting is the lifeblood of college football, as Kirby Smart says, and it helps raise your floor. I mean, Georgia does not have a low floor because of how many five stars and four stars they have and because of how they develop their players. So I just think that Stetson Bennett is going to hold this team back, and I think for Michigan, the potential to hold them back is, in a certain sense, it would probably be the rushing defense. If Georgia can do what Michigan State did, and which I don't even know what that was, and they can just have an amazing run day, it'll be a long day because I don't think that Michigan is going to put up more than 28, maybe, maybe 31 points if we're being generous on this Georgia defense. I just don't think that's going to happen. Georgia's defense is too good. Their front seven is going to get pressure. They're going to make running the ball hard. That's all I have to say for this video. If you like this video, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and comment your thoughts down below. Even if you don't like this video, still like and subscribe because I'm willing to have a discussion and I'm willing to accept your differences, your different opinions, and I hope that it's vice versa for you accepting some of my different opinions. I tried to be unbiased. If you think that I was a little biased, have a discussion, and I'll hopefully respond to you, and we can have a chat, because that's what college football is all about. Conversation and having fun, and in the end, watching these two teams play on the field, and if I'm right, I'm right, and if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Thank you guys again for watching this video, and I'll see you guys around.